There's a little disco action going on. <laughs> Everyone's shouting behind us, but it's a great day to see. A, it's a great excitement for everything that's going on today. It's a great day for America and for our military. Well, Lieutenant Seafried, formerly known as J.D. Smith on this program, uh, let me start with you. How has it felt to you personally to be able to say who you are, to have spent this first 24 hours uh, in, in the new military? Uh, it feels like a, a huge burden has been lifted off your shoulders. I mean, there's not a single day that you cannot think about this policy while serving in the military. And knowing today that there is a career that I have an opportunity to have where I don't have to be scared of who I am and who I love, that I, I, can, I can be part of the military family, and I'm so excited about it. And, and I think every other gay person in the military feels the exact same way. Josh, do you feel like um, there is a need for a group like OutServe to continue? OutServe obviously function as an, an anonymous way, an underground way for gay people actively serving in the military uh, to find one another, support one another, and communicate. Will OutServe continue to exist, and do you think there'll be a continued need for support for gay people in the military? Absolutely. What we can see from our British counterparts, there's not one single British Royal Marine that's out right now, and the policy's been changed for years. So where OutServe can help is to help build that respect and in the military to make sure that people feel comfortable coming out. Like you said, we published uh, our magazine today that's going around bases on military bases today that published real names, real faces of military people, and that goes to show that we're here and uh, we're, we're part of the team. And so in the future, we need to continue to develop that respect in the environment. And uh, we're going to do that. Let me turn now to uh, Lieutenant Colonel Fehrenbach. Um, you are newly retired from the U.S. Air Force. You fought your discharge uh, from the Air Force and were able to retire uh, successfully just in, in recent weeks. Uh, Victor, do you feel like um, your decision to come out and the decision of other individual service members to come out and fight their discharges made this happen faster than it otherwise would have? Uh, I think so, and I just want to uh, say thank you, Rachel. You you allowed a lot of us to come on and tell our stories, and I think that changed uh, some politicians' minds, and I think it changed America's attitudes, that and, and people in the military as well, that, that we were ready for this. Um, and as you mentioned, when I came out, it was uh, the day after I came out on your show, I went back to duty, I put my uniform on, and I remember that morning walking up to my building, and it was really, at that point, 18 years in, it was the proudest day of my life because it hit me, and it's the first time I realized that I was going to go into work and I wasn't going to have to lie, I wasn't going to have to hide, and I wasn't going to have to look over my shoulder. And today, that's why this is such a great day. 65,000 other service members put their uniforms on today, uh, and it was, a, it was a different, great day for them, and they were able to be proud and serve with integrity. Victor, are you, can, are, are you anticipating that there are going to be problems with implementation of repeal? The military has been very firm. The Pentagon has been very firm in saying there are not going to be problems. We are prepared. We are trained. We are ready for this. Having been in the Air Force for 20 years and seen what you've seen, uh, most of that time not being a man who people knew was gay, do you think there is going to be trouble? Um, I think there may be isolated cases, but I think the way this was done, I was obviously the most impatient man in the world having this uh, threat of discharge hang over me for the last three years and, and four months. Um, but I, what, I, what I learned from that in the last two years, again, I've been able to serve openly, and, uh, and I shouldn't be surprised by this, but you know, the military people are professional, they're disciplined, they're dedicated to the mission, and that's all they care about. So there may be isolated cases, but across the board, we took, the, we took our time, uh, we got everybody trained, and I think people have been expecting this for the last 10 months or so. So I think we're ready, and I think those cases will be very isolated. Let me go back to uh, Josh Seafried, uh, United States Air Force First Lieutenant, founder of OutServe, uh, and the author of this new book that is out today, Our Time, Breaking the Silence of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, with names and faces and uh, real stories of people who are openly gay serving in the military as of today. Um, Josh, thinking about serving uh, in the Air Force right now uh, as a person who is on active duty and who is now newly really not anonymous, will it be difficult to also not be anonymous as an activist now. You're no, now both out in the Air Force as a gay man, but also out in the Air Force as somebody who was a real activist to get this policy changed. Is that going to be something that you, it's going to affect your ability to fit in with your unit? A absolutely not. When I go back to work, I'm going to go back in there and do the job that I was signed up to do, that I raised my right hand for, and that's the United States Air Force. Uh, 
under this policy, like you said, I was blackmailed, but I saw the crimes that were committed against other people, including like Lieutenant Colonel Vic Victor Fehrenbach. And when you serve under the policy and see some of these crimes that are committed, you just can't sit back and, and let that happen. Uh, I saw an opportunity to help the Pentagon to get this policy changed, and, and I took it. And, and with an amazing team, we helped to support thousands of active duty service members. So I don't think it's a problem at all to go back to work, to go back to do my job the best I can and what I signed up to do. First Lieutenant Josh Seafried, Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach, uh, I want to thank you both uh, for your activism, for speaking out, the bravery that that took. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight. I sense the opportunity cost of that viscerally because I know there is an open bar there and you are both in the mood to celebrate. So I release you both. Congratulations, you guys. Have a great night. Thanks, Rachel. Cheers to you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks Rachel. Thanks to you both. All right, Nancy Pelosi is also going to be joining us live from Washington tonight. You will not believe where in Washington Nancy Pelosi is going to be joining us from tonight, but she will be with us live for the interview.